Man asked me for prayer. He said, Preacher Warren, can you pray? I want help. He said, I got a problem with lust and pornography. You know, God can help you. I admire the honesty. You know, that's what God likes is when you're honest. That's what made David at the, a, a man at the God's own heart because he was honest. He said, Lord, I got a problem. So when you're honest, God can help you. You may got a problem with lust, just be honest. Say, Lord, I need your help. If you got a problem with drugs, just say, Lord, I need your help. I got a problem with drugs. God admires the honesty. Being honest will help you live holy. Praise God. So this is how you deal with temptations and lust. We know we're surrounded by lust. Even in the church, you got them half-naked women wearing miniskirts and somebody she's an evangelist. How are you evangelist and looking like Jezebel? You're already beautiful. You don't got to dress seductive to attract a man. Let a man love you for yourself. When God gives you a husband, he's going to love you for you. Not just only for the looks, but he'll love the inner beauty. That we're surrounded by lust, especially in the summertime. The devil don't care if you marry. He's a, a lustful woman on your job. Can I keep it real here? A lustful man on your job, they call, they come tall and handsome, but he's a wolf and she clothing. The devil come handsome. He know what you like. The devil come beautiful. That's why I keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God will open up your spiritual eyes to see the demon behind the beauty. Oh, that's deep. He'll give you discernment to see the demon behind the beauty. The devil want to lure you into sex and have you thinking you in love, but you really just in lust. Now, it's only normal to have an attraction for the opposite sex. That's only normal. God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. Praise God. So it's only normal to have an attraction for the opposite sex because you are a man. You are a woman, but you, you're supposed to love each other, not just lust after each other because... You can be involved with a woman and still be flitting around with somebody else. That means that you don't love that woman. Because if you really love that woman, love will give you strength to resist temptation when the devil sends temptation. The love of God will give you strength to resist temptation and say, I'm in love with my wife. And I'm going to love my wife as Christ loved the church. I'm in love with my husband. Now, marriage is not going to stop temptation. The devil is going to send temptation. On your job, even in the church. Sometimes you got these old lustful pastors who are nothing but playboys. Come on. You got these playboy pastors lusting after your wife. Got these playboy pastors having the sex with every girl he prayed for and talking about he a revving. How you a revving and a pimp at the same time? If you can't control your flesh, don't be a pastor of a church. Respect God's daughters and respect another man's wife. Don't take advantage of another man's wife because she's vulnerable. A pastor is supposed to know better. Not getting all these women in the bed, that means you're a playboy pastor. If you don't repent, pastor, you're going to hell for being a playboy and cheating on your wife when the Bible said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. If you got a problem with lust, give it to Jesus and say, Lord, help me. God will help you. But you got to be honest. Honesty will help you live holy. The devil used lust. He used that. Lust has gotten many of us in trouble. How many times have we failed? But thank God we got back up. Many of us had messed up, but we got back up and Jesus can clean us up. Look how lust got Samson in trouble. Samson fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. He was in love with the wrong woman. Samson was in love with a woman who was not in love with him. Many of you are falling in love with people who don't love you back. They're only just lusting after you. You got to make sure that when you get married, make sure you marry somebody who's going to love you back. Praise God. Not someone who just wants your money. She's just a gold digger who want to push the trigger. Make sure you fall in love with somebody who's going to love you back. And now you can love Jesus together. And now God can be the head of your marriage. And a marriage that prayed together is going to stay together. And a family who prays together will stay together. Now the devil cannot send domestic violence in your home. Now, especially when you have arguments in your marriage and you're not getting along, every marriage got problems. But if it's to a point where you want to kill each other, now it's time to separate. Praise God. The devil will send temptation when you're going to a marriage a problem. That's when temptation comes the worst. He'll send you a beautiful woman to encourage you. He may even use one of your family members. You got 
your own husband getting involved with your sister. Now that's mess. Now you can't trust him because he's a flirt. Marriage is about being faithful. There's a difference between a wedding and a marriage. It's a wedding lasts for one day. It's just a ceremony to get married. But a marriage is supposed to last for a lifetime. A lifetime commitment. But you must first be committed to Jesus. So let the Lord lead you who to marry. Pray before you get married so you won't just marry someone who's only lusting after you. Because if he marry you just because of your body, guess what? He going to be cheating on you with another woman because he just lusting after you. When he loves you, no matter how much temptation come to him, he's going to remain faithful to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. When she loves you, she's going to be faithful only to you because she's first faithful to God. Now y'all can love Jesus together. Woo. I feel the Holy Ghost. When you pray, now you can stay. When you fast together, now you can last together. Hallelujah. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. I want to help you. I want to help you here on YouTube. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to help you. Young woman came to me and said, Preacher Juan, I'm going to a marriage situation where well, you got to learn how to keep yourself up. Many of you don't get your head done like you used to. After you got married, you just let yourself go, just eat, 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 eat. And now you're flirting with this one, flirting with that man, flirting with this man. And this is why your husband is jealous, because you're flirting around with the man's brother. So now you can't expect for the man to trust you. Come on, come on. Women, same thing. Praise God. Keep the marriage going. Keep the love going. Go out to dinner. Go out to lunch together. Go on a date together. Praise God. Get your hair done like you did. Even if your hair fall out, you can still get your hair done. But get your heart done first. Let the Lord purify your heart and say, Lord, create me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Men, many of you have let yourself go. You got lazy, don't want to work. Got your belly sitting out. I'm not saying you're ugly, you're still handsome, but don't let yourself go. You just eat, eat, eat. You don't hug each other no more. You don't love each other no more. So the marriage became dull. Many of you preachers are preaching, but you don't spend time with your wife. What's the sense of being married if you never spend time with your wife? You're going to all these revivals, but you never spend time with your wife and children. Then what's the sense of being married? You might as well just be single. Marriage is about spending time together. Loving one another. Telling, giving your wife, give your wife flowers. Some of you husbands stop giving your wife flowers. Go to the beauty salon. Go to the flower shop and give your wife flowers and say, honey, I love you. Don't just wait till Valentine's Day. You should be giving her flowers at least every month. Not just once a year. Keep the love going. Praise God. Hallelujah. Keep the love going. That's the same thing with Jesus. Keep the love going because sometimes the love can get dull because you're having financial problems. Sometimes when you have financial problems, that can affect the marriage too because now you get discouraged. Now you're arguing with each other because you don't know how you're going to pay the rent and the bills and you're having all these children. So sometimes that can cause you, if you don't be careful, to fight against each other. But pray together and see, we're going to come together and we're going to believe God that God is going to bless this marriage. We're going to believe God that God is going to bless your finances. He will provide for you when you're seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added to you. God will provide for you and your children. He will take care of you when you put God first. Don't worry. You say, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So give your wife flowers. Tell your husband, I love you. Keep the love going in the marriage so it won't get dull. And make God in charge of your marriage. And he'll bless you and your children. Hallelujah. He'll bless your children. God will break the generational curse in the name of Jesus Christ. So you can overcome. If, now, you know, it's wonderful how Men can cheat on their wives and the wives still take them back. Now you got to give her time to forgive you because sometimes forgiveness is not always easy because when you got your heart broke by the one who cheated on you, you got to give her time because now you betrayed her. You betrayed her trust. You betrayed his trust. You done had an affair on him. You done cheated on her. So if you're going to say, I'm sorry, give her time to forgive you. Forgiveness is not always easy because she don't trust you no more. Why? You don't cheat on her. 
Or you don't cheat on your husband. Or you don't cheat on your wife. So you must give them time because now they're hurt. They're trying to guard their heart. You got to give them time to forgive you. Give them time. Give it to Jesus. You had to repent and say, Lord, forgive me for I did. And God will forgive you and give your marriage to God. And let him work it out. Because the marriage that prayed together will stay together. Who the, who the Lord have joined together, no man can put asunder. Don't let the devil come in and mess up your marriage. Be married to Jesus first and God will bless you. Woo! Hallelujah. Will you keep his holy word? Not the witch doctor, not the OG board, not the Ouija board, because that stuff is of the devil. I'm talking about Jesus. God said, if you live a holy life, I will bless you. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. i make you above only and not beneath. Will you obey God's holy word? According to Deuteronomy chapter number 28, he will bless you. And when God bless you, don't forget to say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God is fixing somebody's marriage right now, even while I'm speaking. I believe God doing something right now, even while I'm speaking. I'm trying to end this thing, but God won't let me in it. Hallelujah. God is delivering somebody right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.